Now, I've already spent a lot of time talking about how proteins get translated and then spooled like spaghetti into the ER. So what I want to do now is introduce you to kind of the steps of how those proteins get out of the ER and eventually are trafficked through the secretory pathway either to reside in other organelles or at the plasma membrane or to be secreted completely out of the cell. So before I get into the molecular details, specifically of how proteins get from the ER to the Golgi, I want to give you kind of a broad overview because a lot of these processes have conceptual similarities to other uh, membrane trafficking events that we've already seen, such as endocytosis, or that there are recurring themes that you see anytime you move protein or components from one organelle to another organelle. So if we have the ER, what we start with is we often traffic via a vesicle, buds off from the ER, and then eventually fuses to the Golgi. So those proteins that were in the ER that were eventually going to be trafficked out get packaged into a vesicle. Those proteins are then moved and deposited in the Golgi, and then traffic in mechanisms that we're not going to really get in through into through the different cisternae of the Golgi, through the cis, medial, and trans Golgi. And then they bud off a second vesicle or another vesicle from the Golgi that contains, let's say, the protein of interest. And then that vesicle eventually, if it's ultimately a secreted protein like insulin, will then fuse with the plasma membrane dumping its contacts into the uh, extracellular environment. So that's the gist of how things basically move through the secretory pathway. Now to kind of break that down into uh, molecular components or just kind of mo conceptual molecular steps. So the first step that we're going to start with is we have the ER membrane, so it's a lipid bilayer, and it buds, begins to bud off a vesicle. So this is the lumen. This is the cytosolic side. And that vesicle, the budding, is driven by assembly of a set of coat proteins. Now this is pretty much true of anything we've ever studied, it's, and you'll see how conceptually it's similar to endocytosis. So all the steps are similar between endocytosis, ER to Golgi trafficking, trafficking, retrograde trafficking from the Golgi to the ER, which is something we'll also talk about, and also Golgi trafficking to lysosome, plasma membrane. All of these things happen. It's just the molecular components are different. So you begin to butt off a vesicle by assembling a proteinaceous coat and I'm also going to just draw in a oriented plasma membrane protein or membrane protein, transmembrane protein, just to kind of keep track of the orientation because there's some topology things I also want to kind of point out. So, so the first step is you bud a vesicle with a cargo. So you begin to bud it off, and eventually you complete the budding process. And, and then you have a proteinaceous coat on the outside. Right? Because that's largely what's driven, driving uh, the budding process, is assembling these protein coats. And I'll, I'll get into that uh, for ER to Golgi trafficking momentarily, what the details are. I want to point out that this is a vesicle with a coat, not a coated vesicle. The only coated vesicles, coated vesicles refer specifically to clathrin coated vesicles. So if you see a vesicle with clathrin, that's a coated vesicle. Anything else is a vesicle with a coat. And it's very confusing, but it's just uh, a historical issue. So once you fully bullet it off and you have the vesicle with the proteinaceous coat, you disassemble the coat. or you remove it. So you have the vesicle, kind of a naked vesicle, membrane protein oriented. 
and then you have the, the coat gets stripped off. So it's just floating around out in space. Basically all the components of the coat are stripped off, you have the naked vesicle. So once you have that, the membrane is now unshielded and is capable of interacting or being docked to the target membrane. So the next step is to target and dock the vesicle to, uh, to the target membrane. In this case, it's going to be the Golgi. Right? So I'm going to draw the Golgi membrane like so. I'm trying to keep the colors coordinated. It's so a red Golgi. And then what happens is you have the vesicle has proteins on it that then allow it to dock and recognize to cognate proteins on the Golgi surface. So there's kind of this molecular handshake that occurs. Just want to keep it clear what the orientation is. And then the final step is fusion. And I'll just kind of diagram what that looks like. So you have the Golgi membrane and then the the membrane of the ER transport vesicle or whatever vesicle you're dealing with fuses with the lipid bilayer of the target a target uh, target organelle and dumps its contents into the lumen. So in this case it's the lumen over here. So there are a couple of things I'd like to point out is if you notice that the lumen of the ER or of the starting compartment ends up being the interior of the vesicle and then ends up being on the interior of the next organelle. So that little lollipop, the head of the lollipop for a transmembrane protein, if it's inside the ER, it stays inside the vesicle and then inside the lumen of the next transport, uh, the next uh, organelle, or ultimately if this were the plasma membrane, that means the interior of the ER corresponds to the exterior of the cell in terms of topology. Now, um, there's one thing I want to really point out before I go into the molecular details, that if you look at this, the steps of these processes, that you have to butt a vesicle, by forming a coat, you remove the coat, you dock the vesicle, and then you fuse the vesicle to the target membrane. Those are all steps that you see in endocytosis. Those are all steps that you see in ER to Golgi trafficking. Those are all steps that you see in trafficking Golgi to the lysosome. There's, they're basically the same molecular steps you see in every uh, membrane trafficking pathway that you would see in a textbook. But what ends up happening is students often combine the components from one pathway with the components of another pathway. It's like they took endocytosis, ER to Golgi trafficking, Golgi to lysosome trafficking. They took all those components, SAR1, HSP70, clathrin, they put it into a blender and hit for a pay. It just all gets scrambled together and then you get all these crazy answers. And well, it has a certain entertainment value. It is really bad for both uh, people's grades and also for my self-esteem in terms of people understanding what, what I'm trying to teach. So, so it's important to understand that there are similarities between all these pathways, but ER to Golgi trafficking, if you see a question about ER to Golgi trafficking, you should never write clathrin, you should never write HSP70, you should never write dynamite, you should never write any of those components. Make sure you keep the components of the pathway separate, even though in a cartoon form, they look identical, you just write different component names down. And the reason I emphasize this is because year after year, if I don't emphasize it, all these components get scrambled together and it becomes a giant train wreck at midterm or finals time. So I kind of want to just draw your attention to that and kind of as you study, make sure you keep those components separate, even though conceptually, the processes are all very similar and it's easy to kind of get confused and to swap different things out. So with that as kind of an overview, what I'm now gonna do is take you through 
how you build an ER transport vesicle that then eventually docks to the Golgi. And I'm going to focus in this next set of cartoons on how you build the basically step one of budding a vesicle off of the ER uh, and stripping off the coat. And then there will be a whole set of other uh, videos on targeted docking and fusion.